Hello semua, apa khabar? Welcome to Nak Sembang Apa Tu? I'm Sharon Wee and selamat hari raya. So saya harap semuanya sihat dengan keluarga, uh, make sure social distancing, makan rendang, ketupat semua, semua best-best dan yang paling penting kan, hari perayaan ni memanglah bermakna. Dia lain sikit sebab um, COVID-19 tapi kita harapkan semuanya berjalan dengan lancar dan juga sayang menyayangi antara satu sama lain tu yang paling penting. Ha, tahun ni saya tak makan rendang, ketupat uh, semualah tapi tak apa. I tunggu sampai tahun depan. Masak dengan kawan-kawan semua dengan Shali Zulkifli my co-host. Jadi my co-host nampaknya dah pun bersedia. Dia kata tahun ni, tahun ni pula episod yang terakhir episod ke-6 ni live after sports dia nak pakai cantik-cantik. Jadi kita nak Perkenalkan, introduce to all of you our very very beautiful Shalin Zulkifli. Hi, Shalin. <laughs> Lain sikit lah, buat raya kan. Wey, tengok How sikit you? baju kurung ni. Huyo. Baju biasa je. Dua tahun lepas. <laughs> oh, very nice. Uh, ah, yeah. I okay. But then I miss okay. uh, rendang, ketupat, serunding, lontong. Selalunya Uyuh, lontong. I raya. Uh, selalunya I kat Melaka lah dengan kawan-kawan. Uh, Anwar, uh, Mak Ma. Uh, ramai lagi lah kawan-kawan. Tapi uh. tahun ni kita stay safe lah kan. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, celebrate macam mana your celebration this year? Uh, so far okay, biasa je. Uh, Quite, tak adalah macam happening apa, just uh, with family and then masak rendang. This year I, I, I sendiri masak, I try masak sendiri. Uh, ask my mom to rest. And then uh, actually this year macam raya first day, lepas tu kemas rumah. <laughs> tak tahu tengah semangat kemas rumah. <laughs> Patut nampak berkulat uh, so kat <laughs> Kau tidak berabuk kan. Uh, so, I dah share dekat my Facebook. So, harap-harap okay. kawan-kawan semua akan dapat saksikan secara live. We will start in one minute time lah. Naya okay. Tlok kan I, episode ke-6 ni. Betul. I pun nak share kat my Facebook. So, yang paling penting nak seimbang apa tu? Finale. Final episode. Ha, Shalin dah nak menangis, dia kata nak lagi. Don't worry, kita ada <laughs> our TV talk show very soon. Don't worry. <laughs> InsyaAllah. Yes, true, true, yes. true. Ada yang baru makan, ada yang tengah lepak-lepak. So just nice lah eh. bersama kami, Betul saya lah. dan juga Shalin Zulkifli. Okay, let's start. So nampaknya kita akan bermula untuk sem nak sembang apa tu. Yes. Oh, ada masuk dah Halim. Yes. Hi TV. Thank yes. you. Semua kawan-kawan kita. Jadi kepada kawan-kawan semua selamat hari raya dan uh, terima kasih kerana bersama saya Sharon Wee dan Shalin Zulkifli untuk episod terakhir the last episode episode number 6 which we are going to talk about life after sports. A very very interesting topic to talk about. A little bit emotional and macam-macam lah. A lot of spices <laughs> there. And myself, yes. my background, of course, um, together with Charlene, we were teammates but different sports. I was a professional squash player, played for Malaysia for 20 years and now TV sports personality. And Charlene Zulkifli, mana orang tak kenal dia. Dia so famous sampai <laughs> Tim Milo pun muka dia kat sana tu. <laughs> Our bowling team. So kita tabik kepada Shalin. Uh, sebenarnya nak sembang apa tu saya ya yeah, saya actually <laughs> bincang dengan Shalin lah. Saya kata Shalin let's do something during uh, kita punya si MCO kan untuk naikkan semangat kawan-kawan kita dan sebagainya. So we did it Shalin. This is our last episode live after yeah. sport. Dan tujuan kita, our aim as well uh, together with Charlene, myself, we said we must do this because we want to share our experience as uh, elite athletes so that it can be guidance for everybody. 
for athletes, yes. for coaches, for sports parents, officials, and many, many more. And of course, you know, sports, we want to encourage everybody to do sports because it's healthy. You tengok saya ni dengan Charlene ni, sehat, pretty-pretty tau sebab main sports. <laughs> and, um, yes, and we, yeah, you know, as a career, we aspire to have our own uh, TV sports talk show one day. So hopefully it will come true. Today, Charlene, kita nak cakap pasal yeah. life after sports and of course, macam saya kata, kata tadi, quite emotional and also banyak perencah tentang topik. Ha, yes. yes, banyak perencah. Uh, okay, today also kan Charlene, kita ada dua surprise uh, apa guest kan hari ni juga. Uh, nak bagi tahu sekarang ke later? Boleh, kita boleh bagi tahu okay. sekarang. We have two quite recent, uh, one recent uh, last year and one uh, tak recent sangat lah. Uh, one is Jack uh, from Wushu who just uh, retired end of last year. Um, and then we have apa, Afzan kan? Afzan. Yes, Nora Afzan. Uh, netballer, Nora Afzan, uh, uh, our former netballer who's also um, Right now, the head of the coaching uh, coaching unit in uh, MSN, kan? ISN. 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 Right. Uh, ISN, yes, yeah. ISN. So, we have those two uh, that will be sharing their stories with us. Uh, saya pun akan share story saya. Tak tahu lah <laughs> cakap retire. Semi-retirement. Semi-retirement ke? Retire datang balik. Macam uh, lah lebih kurang. So, yes. uh, if any of you have any comments or would like to share anything with us or questions, uh, you may uh, write in at the comment section and we'll try to answer it since today is our last episode. Oh, episode <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Salin, kita bercakap tentang last episode, jadi kita nak tengok episode 1 hingga episode 5 sebab mungkin ada yang terlepas ke apa, so we will show our poster ni. Yes. Uh, so kalau you tengok poster-poster poster ni, the first one I buat lah. Then slow and steady you cannot, you tengok lagi lama lagi kreatif. Eh, itu Alia, <laughs> Charlene, the daughter dengan Charlene buat lah eh. So this is first one. So um, Charlene, gambar kita ni kita tengah bersembang kan. Dan I tengok apa yeah. nak letak gambar ni ya. Eh? Because we are good friends so jadilah yeah. poster ni. This is our episode yeah. one pada 22 hari bulan April dan kita cakap pasal apa tu uh, continuous learning then how yes. about episode kedua Shalin? Nah, episode kedua uh, we had on the 29th of April uh, My Sporty Childhood uh, pasal uh, cerita-cerita zaman uh, kami muda-muda share dengan saya cara kami um, Tangani stres, cara kami naik uh, dari apa jadi atlet remaja hingga atlet elit, elit dan pro professional atlet. Yeah. Uh, so banyak nangis nangis juga. Okay, semua sedih sedih ya, emo. <laughs> Tapi yang ni tak sedih lah nak sembang apa tu untuk episod uh, ketiga ni pada yeah. 6 hari bulan Mei uh, tentang ups and downs of fame sebab atlet ni dipandang tinggi oleh semua masyarakat kan dia orang ni memang yeah. famous tapi bagaimana untuk control um, kefamousan tu <laughs> being a celebrity <laughs> untuk gunakan use it positively not negatively so all the episodes that uh, we terangkan actually from episode 1 to 5 and today 6 it's uh, in our YouTube actually. Sharon, Charlene yes. nak tembang apa tu YouTube. Anda boleh pergi tengok kat sana lah. I think it's very very interesting for everybody. So episode seterusnya Charlene? Episode 4 uh, from our stories was about uh, cakap betul-betul lah. Okay? Uh, it was about communication and how to communicate better uh, as athletes, as parents, as uh, as uh, sports administrators so that uh, the athlete is able to achieve the main team target which is success. Yeah. All right. And we yeah. have the previous um, nak sembang apa tu, it's all about how to handle injury because it's very important. Uh, injury yeah. is athlete's biggest enemy. So that was yeah. when Charlene and I and of, of course our um, number one national squash player, Lo Wee Wen, 
yes, shared even. about how do you handle it and rehab, how do you prepare um, to be stronger mentally, emotionally as well. So that's all yes. we share in our last five episode. And, and you also, Sharon, uh, lupa me, masa oh. tu yang injury ni, Sharon bagi tahu about her, apa, almost life-threatening accident. Uh, Correct. Sebab yeah. lagi nangis semua. So, yeah. I think so, yeah. everything, the, the difference can be uh, between our, I mean, our last five shows, all of our, all, all of our shows is that macam every time after our show, me and Sharon were like, apa, buat post-mortem kan, cakap. Then yeah. Sharon cakap, eh, so after show tu, I penat lah. Just because we like really put our passion, it's really our passion and memang kita uh, tak malu tak segala lah, share all our experience with every one of you all so that, you know, the kids, the mom and dad, uh, the coaches and the sports officials will be able to learn from our uh, triumphs and also our defeats and mistakes. Yeah, okay. um, sharing like that, even sometimes uh, I don't share to everybody, but this is really yeah. like Farid Shalin kata, lepas kita buat sharing, rasa macam wow, you know, excited Betul. but at the same time very Orang kata, quite tired because we gave it all when we share, kan? Yeah. Dan how to yeah. handle injury, of course, uh, I treat a, I shouldn't say secret, but something that I didn't share with everybody. I had accident, almost died, but I came back because I love my sports. I have my goal to represent Malaysia, kan? So, hidup balik. Dan di sinilah saya bersama Shalin Zulkifli dan anda semua. Dan episod terakhir, episod ke-6, Ni poster ni terbaik lah. Thank you very much Alia and Shalin. Kita tengok Harimau. Memang gagah perkasa. But it's all about life after sports. Di mana, yes. you know, dalam kehidupan akan, uh, sesuatu akan berakhir. Tapi bukan um, the end of life. Something yes. new will happen. So this is Betul. when today we want to share with you. I mean, of course, I dah bersara pada tahun 2010. Banyak yang ingin saya kongsikan. Charlene masih gagah perkasa dalam dunia bowling. <laughs> tapi I'm sure dia akan yeah. share preparation yeah. beliau sendirilah untuk bersara satu yeah. hari nanti. So that's Betul. all six episode. Please uh, go to Sharon Charlene nak sembang apa tu on YouTube. Anda boleh lihat semula video-video ataupun di Facebook yeah. kami lah. So okey lah. Itu tentang uh, six episode pada hari. Kita terus untuk bincangkan tentang life after sports ya, Charlene? Yes, Sharon. Ya, yeah, so life after sports, um, pendapat anda, Charlene? What What do you think about life after sports? What's the rencah-rencah of life after sports? Actually, banyak rencah-rencah life after sports ni because um, uh, bila kita dah, macam saya kan, contohlah, saya dah, I'm 42 now. So, about to retire soon, I think. So, macam you have gone through, macam saya, saya start uh, sports umur 9 tahun. And like three quarters of my life, tiga dekad daripada hidup saya, saya menjadi ahli sukan. So, actually, bila you masuk track without for retirement, uh, sekarang I was, apa, um, athlete 365, I was, uh, is National Olympic Council, kita orang panggil uh, transition period, transition period. So, Bila you go through the transition period, it's very very tricky sebab yelah, all our life kita dah biasa bersukan, hidup kita dah uh, ikut jadual, uh, ada orang bagi tahu, okay, go berapa, you kena dekat sini, uh, hari bulan ni, hari bulan tu, you ada tournament, all your schedule, periodization, semua orang dah buat. So, bila you masuk ke alam baru ni, the transition period ni, of course you'll be scared because it's something new yang you memang tak biasa lagi. Uh, so, dalam melengkapkan diri you untuk menghar mengharungi transitional period tu, there's a few things that you can do. Uh, like uh, before, uh, the Ethics Commission, OCM Ethics Commission, my uh, predecessor before me, uh, Nora Sheila, our fellow Olympian juga, uh, they did a lot of uh, career talk to prepare athletes and also macam uh, dalam career talk tu, you have a lot of uh, macam we have to do like uh, like a, bukan test tapi macam uh, tengok you punya 
uh, traits, your good traits, your your bad traits, what you, what you're good at, what you're bad at. Macam kita sekolah form 5 kan ada uh, apa minggu kerjaya kan. So lebih kurang macam tu lah. So once you go through that, then you you get to know what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are and then you try and work on your weaknesses so that by the time you retire, it will be one of your strengths. Sama yeah. macam we have to approach this the same way as we approach uh, our life uh, in sports. Because yeah. we, your game plan is the same, uh, your attack really is the same, your goals are the same, cuma the environment will be different. But you can apply everything that you've done before in your life as an athlete to your next life as a, a normal person. Can. Yeah. Tapi banyak, uh, cuma kita bila kita masuk transition period sekarang, I see banyak uh, athlete yang macam tak prepared for it. Uh, like for me, uh, my parents, uh, even my husband now pun selalu ingatkan, I know you're going to retire soon, so you have to prepare yourself, blah, blah, blah. Mak bapak I daripada dulu lagi dah, dah ingatkan, okay, you nak kena retire, make sure you prepare. So, that's why I uh, also study uh, dalam kita bersukan tu, uh, wakili negara, I also study uh, sport psychology, major sport psychology kat UM, sport science. Then I took, uh, I've taken my coaching courses uh, under USBC, uh, MTBC. Uh, I've also uh, coach, uh, former coach Sukma Selangor, uh, head coach for them for I think, uh, assistant coach and head coach for like more five, six years, few Sukmas, three, four Sukmas. And then I'm also helping out in our uh, grassroots level, uh, our uh, Satuan Tepin Bowling Selangor, uh, saya speak to her kat situ. Uh, I also am involved in uh, building up our future generation uh, especially for the state of Selangor sebab saya anak Selangor. Uh, so banyak jugalah saya buat. Tapi kadang-kadang some of the juniors kan, dia tengok my schedule and dia cakap, eh kak banyak sangat lah you buat tak penat ke? You know, dia punya, dia soalan tu tak penat ke? Cakap memang penat tapi you have to prepare for the future because you have to realize that kita punya future ni as an athlete can stop at any time. So if you don't start today or yesterday, it's too late already, you know, because you never know. Once you have injury, you might not be in the team. Once uh, maybe you are off form, you know, might probably might, might be dropped from the team. And when you're dropped from the team, you know, sometimes you're totally dropped where you don't have any form of income. So you have to prepare yourself. But I see a lot of athletes now. So, Alhamdulillah, there are many masuk IPTA, IPTS, uh, IPTA, IPTS pun banyak offer scholarship compared to my time before. Uh, Sharon pun, uh, fellow degree holder juga, master's yeah. or something like that. Uh, yeah. So we have to prepare ourselves. Sambil kita bersukan, kita kena make sure we prepare ourselves for the time bila kita dah lepas bersukan. So it's very important to upskill ourselves. Macam kadang kita tak tahu, uh, yelah sebab kita bersukan kadang kita banyak benda yang kita tahu compared to rakan-rakan kita yang sama umur dengan saya, contoh sama umur dengan saya, mereka dah jadi boss, dah jadi manager, dah jadi GM ke. Kita baru nak masuk start kerja kan. So macam, uh, kita kena gunakan masa yang kita ada, yang kita telah apa bertungkus lumus, apa uh, berkorban untuk negara tu uh, dengan baik. So sometimes some employers will take that into consideration as your work experience. Sebab kan kita tak ada work experience, uh, and some will not. So if will not, you start from zero. Yeah. You know, you start from zero. It's not easy at forty something, at thirty something, or at twenty something for you to start from zero. Ila sebab Kadang-kadang ada setengah, ada pasal ego juga. Of course, like, oh, you dah jadi asid negara. Nanti tiba, eh, you kena kind of like start daripada bawah kan. But for yeah. me, it's fine. Because sometimes, kalau apa kita buat pun, we have to start from the bottom. Yeah. Masa contoh, dulu saya uh, ada pusat bowling pun, saya cuci toilet, saya jual, apa uh, punch in uh, game, saya basuh kasut, saya um, oil can lane. You cannot have a certain... Uh, ego when you go into your workplace sebab kita tak ada experience so kita kena belajar dari bawah and once you learn from the bottom macam kita bersukan juga once yeah. you learn from the bottom kita ada ilmu bila kena atas senang 
Bila kita yeah, yeah. just masuk dan tak tahu apa dan bila if anything goes wrong, susah. Kita macam, alamak. Ah, uh, kita tak ready for that. Kind of yeah, situation. I agree with you, Charlene. Um, your sharing mm-hmm. is really, really good. Sebab sekarang ni, you are still playing at your peak also. Yeah. But at the same time, I can hear that you are preparing for life yeah. after sport because it will happen. Yeah. Jangan yeah, yang it's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So macam you kata, jangan ego sangat. You are there forever. Kan preparation mm. is so important and support system. And we also yeah. want to thank, you know, for the past our five episodes, all the sports community, coaches, the fans, semua um, actually appreciate lah our show ni nak sembang apa tu. Even today, kita nampak kita punya regulars eh, like Halim, dia kata hi, Timmy yeah. Tan, your teammate, Daina Abdullah from KPM. <laughs> department, we have Charanjit Singh, we have Daphne Ng, our coach, uh, former badminton yeah. player. We have yeah, Petro yeah. Felix, our DJ. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> yes, then we have Cecilia, we have Rick Wee, we have Auntie Molly. Wow, thank you so much because yeah. this show actually is very raw and we actually yeah. learning also. Charlene and I, at yeah. first kita kata, eh macam mana nak buat? Eh? So this is when good friends guide us to do this live FB through, you know, through this nak sembang apa tu. And here we are sharing with everybody. So kepada anda semua di luar sana, kalau nak bertanya tentang life after sports, if you have any question about life after sports and your opinion about athletes preparing for life after sports, please write your comments because we would like to know what's in your mind as well. Because we have our own our own opinion but we want to hear from you as well. So for me, I would like to share, uh, memanglah right. life after sports ni, it's uh, quite scary for me because I played for Malaysia for 20 years, yeah. uh, wakil negara, number 18 in the world, number one in the country. In 2010, the end of 2010, I still remember, what do I do next? And I'm very sure all athletes at the end of their career will ask that question. So for me, I would like to share some photos, of course, you know, my memories as well, my journey in squash, in sports, and I'm very proud to uh, represent Malaysia. So this is part of my journey, my storybook actually. So this is when I started, because about life after sports ni, kita bermula daripada sekolah rendah, primary school, secondary school, whether you are in university or not, but then, you know, you become full-time athletes. Some of the athletes choose to be full-time athletes and then what's next for them. So I started from here in Malacca. Then slowly it went to becoming the best in the world with my teammates together with Wewen, Delia, Nicole herself and some other teammates as well. Then it went on, you know, uh, to be the best of the best in Malaysia and of course internationally as well. Mm-hmm. Then again, what do I do next? Of course, in 2010, I partnered with Shauki Kaha, our very, very legend in sports commentary. We did uh, commentary for KL Open and Malaysia Open. I still remember that. So at that time, they need sports expert, can to partner with yeah. the main commentator. So... I took the courage, tak pernah buat, and I said, okay, take the opportunity and yeah. went for it. So I think you also remember, kan, Charlene, how I yeah. started. It's never easy. So yeah. that is when my career from athletes, I went into broadcasting sebagai penyampai, pembaca berita, dan juga pengulas sukan di Astro Arena. This is when I want to thank Astro Arena for giving me the opportunity, lah, like stepping stone for my career in broadcasting as well. So great memories. Uh, for example, here with uh, my former teammate, Sharil, uh, doing comment- uh, commentary in squash. Then with Nicole David, I actually had the privilege to announce exclusively when she wanted to announce that she's going to retire. And she herself told me, Sharon, I want you to announce that and you are the first person to know. So. Aww. Things like that makes me feel, you know, so grateful, so glad. That means I've done something well for someone yes. as big as her to acknowledge that. So I really thank you for that. So this is when my career, about nine, ten years, 
until now as a broadcaster I'm I'm very very grateful for the opportunity lah untuk terus uh, berjaya dalam bidang uh, broadcasting at the same time Shalin not just that I actually prepared myself not just to be in broadcasting sebab broadcasting ni dia I tak plan pun actually yeah. the opportunity comes and because my degree is in business in UPM so uh. Tak ambil pun uh, mass comm ke apa. Tak ada experience. Tapi bila opportunity tu datang, I kata, okay, apa yang I ada? Pertama sekali, my skill in sports. Kedua, my communication. Ketiga, good attitude is very important. Humble, yeah. dengar cakap, kan? Belajar. So, besides that, I prepared myself also in uh, coaching as well as apa tu, uh, become a motivational speaker sebab I ada degree, I ambil certification as a corporate trainer, as a speaker and also I had level 3 international coaching certificate. So that prepared me for life after sports and I really suggest kepada atlet-atlet semua preparation cukup penting. Jangan anda yeah. ingat macam Shalin kata, don't wait until last minutes. Then you panic pula sebab tak ada yeah. certificate, tak ada skill baru dan sebagainya. So you need to be prepared early and with support yeah. system. Jangan malu untuk bertanya lah. So yeah. this is when okay. I become MC, um, you know, work with youth dan sebagainya dalam, ini, ini adalah seminar OCM. Olympic Council of Malaysia dengan IOC and this is me moderator untuk wanita dalam tukan bersama dengan KBS dan ni, ni bersama adik-adik kecil kita untuk inspire mereka, give them a very nice um, what you call session, a motivational talk to them and this is also our session, tengok jelingan Shalin Zutri kepada Shalini Ada lawak So That is uh, some of my sharing lah. Bagaimana transisi saya sebagai pemain squash negara selama 20 tahun berhenti pada 2010 terus ke dalam bidang uh, broadcasting sebagai penyampai sukan juga seorang coach dan motivational speaker and also entrepreneur. And we learn. My experience is sometimes you do not know what you want at, at first It's okay to try few things. You settle down, work hard, and at end of the day, somehow you settle down and you choose one or two that you feel comfortable and very close to your heart. True. So that's what um, I want to share with everybody, lah. Kan? Uh, but what's your feedback, Shalin, about being brave to take chance as? athletes who are transitioning to a new world, a corporate world? I think it's not easy, um, macam kita cakap tadi. Uh, for example, like, uh, I use my closest example, my husband, uh, RGB, uh, Amir, who's also an ex-national uh, bowler as well. Masa dia retire pun, it was quite difficult for him because dia pun macam jenis yang, ah, okay, wait, wait, uh, I, I will, nanti, I will always have time, you know, to to do that. Uh, which a lot of us get stuck into. Then when he retired, uh, he went to coaching. He went to coaching uh, because he didn't want to didn't want to sit down in the desk desk job. And kita kalau jadi athlete dah active, dia nak harap tu duduk dalam the office nine to five memang susah lah kan macam menggelupul ya kan. So uh, he went to coaching and now he's been coaching ever since. I think he for the last 14 years, uh, more than 10 years lah dia coach. So he took all the certification. So that's why it it's it is scary because sometimes benda yang kita even when, for me when I wanted to take my first coaching cert pun like it was scary like will I know all these things or not you know kind of thing like nanti aku orang cakap uh, kalau eh cakap main dah uh, menang goals here and there but then when you come to coaching cert you you fail you know those kind of things so so it's because kita dah biasa um, You know, when you compete, you have to put your yourself macam tinggi sikit egos because you're going to compete. You tak boleh rasa rendah diri sangat. But in this in this environment, you have to put yourself lower so that, you know, 
tak, tak apa, tak kisah. If you fail ke apa pun, it's okay. Just make the first step. Yep. Buat langkah pertama, register your name, register yourself. Like even if your coaches tell you, no, no, you can't take one week off because contoh like uh, apa, Academy Kerja Latihan Kebangsaan, if you take sports science level 1, level 2, level 3, you need to take one week off because the course is from 9 to 5, you know. So take that. If you have to take annual leave ke from your resource, take that one week off because you never know when you're going to retire. So take that one week off because there's a lot of things to learn and I, saya rasa that we shouldn't be afraid. Uh, bagaimana kita berani bila kita berjuang untuk negara, uh, kita kena berani juga because this one at the end of the day is our life. Yep. Kita wakil untuk negara, is untuk negara tapi ni is our future at the end of the day. So we have to take the first step forward uh, your, uh, surround yourself, macam saya cakap tadi, dengan uh, good support system yang sentiasa cakap dengan you, uh, apa, remind you langit tinggi rendah, you know, uh, make sure kalau ni pun sementara you tengah kira uh, menjadi salah seorang atlet remaja kebangsaan top 10 ke top 5 ke, if you can masuk uh, IPTA or IPTS because a lot of them offer scholarship, take that scholarship, study do both. A lot, I meet a lot of kids um, yang masuk pelapis kemasaan and then they, they tell me, oh kak, it's susah lah kak, nak kena belajar, nak kena main sekali. Uh, tapi sebab saya pun nak nak spend time dengan kawan saya juga, nak bersosial. Then I can, I tell them like, if I can do it and a lot of other athletes yang boleh buat, kenapa you tak boleh buat? You have to put your priorities. You have to put your priorities. Macam dulu masa saya belajar pun ada setengah tu macam, Oh, suruh I run for apa student body semua tu but I swear I cannot because my life is sports and studies. My yeah. goal is to win medal kat sport dengan uh, get my degree. Nak memang nak tapi you don't, I don't have time. Every time memang memang just kerja pergi kelas, kerja pergi training. Kerja pergi kelas, kerja training. So, those are the things that you sacrifice and you kena buat lah. Yeah. You know, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. at the yeah. end of the day, you can go ready. Yes, I agree with you. Education is very, very important to prepare an athlete's transition in a new career because yeah. kalau without education, without new skill, without yeah. orang kata courage to try something new, then you plan to fail actually. That's the reality yeah. because this is yeah. my experience as well. I nak bagi tahu kepada semua, bila I end of 2010, bila I nak retire tu, I I had light depression really yeah i yeah. i takut nak bangun tidur in the morning it's like who am i what am i going mm. to do in 2011 what's next yeah do people know me who is sharon we yeah. um then what's next everything is gray i'm not sure i feel scared and let me tell you that is normal don't be mm -hmm. so afraid but you cannot just sit down because you need to prepare. Like I said, prepare yeah. earlier. Like Charlene said, education, KPM sekarang also support the athletes. Their yeah. sports de department are really, really good with uh, Sekolah Suka Malaysia, with the teachers, officials are very supportive. KPT, they have scholarship. Even OCM, uh, MSN, even KBS, they have a lot of program to athletes. Yang paling penting, you need to be brave and also humble to go forward lah. And we have Betul. a lot of good comments eh, Charlene kat sini. Mm -hmm. uh, antaranya, we have Petro Felix, a very yeah. uh, supportive of sports as well. Uh, used to be my colleague. He says, I don't feel you actually end your career. You guys have the talent and experience, experience to mold the younger talent and leave their experiences with them like how a parent passes their advice to their children and enjoy the light of their growth and successes and failures. I totally yeah. agree with you, uh, Petro. Like I said, yes, end of career of our athletes' life, but then it's a new beginning for yes. athletes yes. themselves. Uh, besides yeah. that, we have many more here. Halim also gave a good one. Halim? I yeah, I will encourage those athletes who have retired if you have a work career to move on at it, be part of a sporting academy or grassroots. Foremost, be part of a sports association. Needing more, no, needing more who knows the athlete inside out rather in theory of it. 
yeah, this is true. Because, but, uh, uh, I mean, from my personal experience in Halim, it's not easy because uh, sometimes we have to manage our expectations. Eh? Because when yeah. you go to grassroots, uh, you're going to get a pay cut. Uh, which is not easy for some athletes because they ha have monthly commitments, they have families and all those things. So it's not easy. Like um, for me, even for me, uh, after winning uh, quite a lot of things and people knowing me, I still have four to five jobs that I do right now uh, to keep me busy and to make sure that I'm updated with, with what's happening uh, in Malaysia and around the world. So not everyone... Um, Unfortunately, is able to do that. But um, yeah, I do agree with you to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. Karuku, he says loss of identity, depression. I feel that is such a waste if an ex athlete feels that way when you were trained to excel at anything you do. I use the skill to turn competitiveness to build a business and thrive where others fail. Only sad thing, I keep sick. Uh, is most athletes give excuses of the failure in line, but forget RL is another arena to compete in. Yes and no, um, I, I really appreciate your feedback, yeah. Karuku, but end of the day, that's the real story. Elite athletes do go through a bit of depression and or even very, very bad depression yeah. because all their life yeah. is searching for success for the country and themselves. Can you imagine... Yeah. Let me share with you. I live with Nicole David in Amsterdam. All we do is training, 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 going for tournaments away from home. For me, 10 years, Nicole more than that. It's all about our goal for the country and like I said, for our career in sports. Do we have social time? No, that, not that much. What do we do yeah. during festival, Chinese New Year? We are away from home. So can you imagine we leave sports? And of course, when we leave sports, sometimes we do not know who are we next. So this is when today the discussion is all about helping the athletes themselves to transition, whether it's education, support system, KBS, MSN, ISN, sports association, corporate companies come forward to help and I really yeah. think government sports association, especially KBS, MSN, ISN, should give opportunity to ex-athletes to get jobs in their organization. Yeah. I think that's very important because I think yeah. KBS now as well working very hard um, and under uh, Datuk Sri Rizal, um, our new uh, minister of sports, to encourage more companies to give jobs to the youth and also athletes. And I think that is really, really good. And yeah. I also encourage KBS, MSN, ISN, do take former Thank athletes you. to work yeah. with them also. Because you have yeah. to lead by example, kan? Yes, that's true. Because once, I mean, we can see from when I started, uh, kalau I masuk MSN kan, dah jadi uh, macam masuk MSN kerja. Sekarang, I dah jadi macam, dah boleh dapat apa yang macam retirement gitu kan? So like I, from when I started uh, as an athlete, I can see most of orang yang dalam MSN pun nak cari uh, one or two ex-athletes that's inside working in MSN or ISN, susah. But now you see there is a lot of ex-athletes working in ISN and MSN. So that's why in a way we can see like because they have been there, they are ex-athletes. So they know apa kekurangan masa dia jadi athlete, apa yang kita need to work on. So I can see that the efficiency is a lot better now compared to before. Dulu-dulu lah. Because, I mean, dah banyak athlete dalam tu. And athletes yang masuk pun semua yang memang berkaliber. They have the education. They have everything they need to to back up uh, their, apa? Their permohonan to go into uh, MSN or ISN yeah. or anywhere. Uh, but I see also a lot not right now. Um, I don't know about other sports. But for bowling, I see a lot of uh, GLC, government companies, uh, majlis perbandaran yang ambil uh, our young bowlers actually to be a part of them. Uh, macam LHDN, DBKL, uh, we have a few macam Adrian was was with DBKL um, and then um, banyak lah MBPJ, MPSA. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good good direction that we're heading. Obviously it's not as 
good as Korea where they get paid just untuk apa main untuk daerah je dah dapat gaji macam 2000 3000 US because the cost of living is so high but we are heading there but itulah if we have uh, apa a nudge from KBS MSN ISN all the government company, uh, government uh, ministries yep. it will it will move in a, a faster pace lah saya rasa yes. I totally agree. I think um, all of you watching this show, nak sembang apa tu, live after sports, I'm sure you agree that everybody, the support system have to come together. Because athletes' yes. lifespan is very short. I should say, yes. it, I should say lah, this is my personal view, it's one of the shortest career. Because it's all about physical. As you get a yes. little bit older, The younger ones, of course, naturally, physically, they are a bit faster, a bit stronger. But that doesn't mean it should stop parents to encourage the children to be yeah. professional athletes or full-time athletes. Yeah. How do you do it? Well, it's education. It's through, you know, through uh, character building and all that to prepare for you for life after sports. So, like yeah. we said today, we are not, Just both of us, me and Charlene, we have invited very, very special guests, two special guests, and one of them, of course, our dear friend, Wushu World Champion, and now yes. a Wushu Coach, and he himself, a very, very smart guy, educated and all, because he has Master MBA mm. to prepare yeah. for his life after sport. So let's welcome Lo Jack Chang. Hello, Sharon and Charlene. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jack. Selamat hari raya. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> How are you Jack. all doing? Yeah, Good, how are you? Enjoy the raya. <laughs> so, this is Jack. Yeah. Hello. So, Jack, I see hmm. you are very busy to entertain uh, and lift up the spirit of Malaysian through your Tai Chi <laughs> class, la, Wushu <laughs> class, through your webinar, is it? Yeah, yeah, I always see the dinding. I always see the dinding, that background. Dinding, yeah, yeah. This is my dinding. back backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Jack, uh, today, thanks very much, first of all, for joining me and Charlie. Uh, for yeah. our Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's my honor. Pleasure, <laughs> pleasure. So, we want to yeah. ask about your experience as a mm -hmm. top athlete, a world champion. But how do you prepare yourself towards mm -hmm. transitioning life after sports? Mm, for this transitioning, I think we need to plan ahead, like a few years ahead to get yourself prepared because you need to like have a plan for yourself first to get ready the umbrella be before it rains, right? So you need to like plan for what you want to do or what you need after the uh, sport career, you know, because we are not sure what the world is going to be afterwards, right? So everything we need to plan first, like you need to have like plan Plan A, Plan B, or Plan C. Yeah. So at the moment, uh, like for me, before that, I try to ask around the people, my friends, or my uncles, aunties. Yeah, because you need to talk to them to ask for their advices because they are like uh, well-experienced people around the real world life, right? Yeah. So I think that's a very good resources for all of us to ask because you need to, like, you need to show them what, you are interested in, only they can advise you, or give you a suggestion. Yeah, so that's uh, one of my way, I can say. Yeah. So I can see that you <laughs> go all the way in education, taking your uh, MBA. What mm -hmm. motivates yeah. you to do MBA? Because you're already a world champion. <laughs> If you go out there and coach, <laughs> people will just take you. Yeah. Uh, not really, because at the time, right, when we are just, uh, when we are, I was just focusing on training, right, I feel like, Uh, it's quite empty for me <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> yeah, at that time. Oh. Uh, because every day we just uh, wake up and training and that's all, you know. So like in between the training times, I feel that I need to do something, you know, to enhance myself, to strengthen like uh, part of my skills or to learn something. So uh, at the end, yeah, I went to <laughs> the MBA <laughs> <laughs> you know, to some fill up my time. Some you know, some athletes feel that their life <laughs> Uh, after their life, uh, training the and gym, ah, right? uh, training and gym dah cukup penat dah. Jana, what's your comment mm -hmm. about that? Because uh, they don't want to study because it's too tired, too tired. Yeah, because that's about the time management for me. Mm. Yeah, because when you have so uh, like limited time, and then you will know that how to plan your time uh, better 
or well back uh, how to say like well managed your all the time because like most of our juniors i can say that uh, for example if they have lots of free time in between they will just sleep or just playing on their phones right yeah that's all what what they're going to do like most of the day okay yeah, like during yeah. mco like <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but if you get yourself into like a busier time or busier schedule you have to plan everything like your training schedule you need to finish like up to what time and then go for like rehab or recovery and then after that you need to go for the school or the classes and like for that i would say that the pack time will make yourself more uh like to fulfill yourself more yeah that's my experience yeah. here so uh jack we have um from our viewer here look mm-hmm. Chin Giap, he says, I always okay. tell my son that academic comes first, please. Mm-hmm. Comes first, of course. Sports okay. as a good hobby, second, as it won't last long. Injury, aging. So what's mm-hmm. your feedback to parents or to people out there to in- mm-hmm. introduce sports to their young children? Mm-hmm. Okay, so for me, I would say that the academic part will be like our basics, you know. You need to learn all the best six things. And then when you're going to the sport, it's like more so it's like more to your interest. Because you need to have some interest or hobby to uh, to lighten up your life, you know. Because it's not just about yeah. one one thing like to study on it. Yeah. So yeah. as long as you are active in sport, you will feel that yeah, there's some goals that I need to achieve. Like it's the same thing in the academy. You you have tests or like exam you need to study and you need to achieve that result so same thing in the sport so i i would say that they are both like almost the same thing yeah you will feel the experience can be like shared in both fields yeah, yeah uh, for me personally and i'm sure a lot of you agree as well Yes, education is very important, especially Asian parents, Malaysian parents <laughs> like you lah. Dapat sepuluh a, kalau boleh lima belas a. But Obok again, from my, yeah, from my experience, right? Yes, a children can be very, very smart in education, but what mm-hmm. makes them different than others? Because there yeah. are also people who get stand A's, but what mm-hmm. is your X factor? Well, yeah. good attitude. Good leadership. If you are good in sports, you get to go to university compared to yeah. others who don't have sports. Yeah, or even bonus. If have, yeah. Yes, it's a bonus. Or even yeah. if you are good in music. So, core curriculum like that is important for the development of the kids physically, yeah, emotionally, and mentally yeah. as well. So, and I also think, confidence. I think, yes. I think it makes you a whole person. It makes you a whole yeah. person so that you're, you're balanced. In terms of education, but right now, I mean, like from what um, just now, look right was was saying. Um, yeah. so, uh, my opinion was that yeah, education is important. But then, if you think back, right now at this moment in time, if your if uh, the athlete uh, also focuses focuses on his school education, he'll have both. And you know, like you said, the X factors just now sharing. Like, if you apply for universities, local or abroad, mm-hmm. it's so much easier for you to apply to get into the university if you have both, not only education, because everybody's going to be smart. Everyone yeah. can score ten A's. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to be you. There's people who's going to be smarter than you. you I mean, that's a fact. And there's yeah. there's people who's going to be have more A's and all those things. But what is going to be uh different outstanding it's going to point. be uh, yeah. outstanding point for you and them so education so actually right now is for example like IPTA it's so hard to get into IPTA again especially mm-hmm. uh, right. where everybody has 10 A's and so on so when you have that sport edge SUKMA gold medalist world champion Asian yeah. champion you nak masuk IPTA pun lagi senang and then dah, dah dapat masuk IPTA and then you can apply for scholarship so in mm-hmm. a way you know you get to balance what the parents want future for their kids and also what the athletes want which is to be able to compete yes. so i think yeah. uh, both slurry cuma kita kena yalah kena push diri kita sikit like i uh, i think last time sharing we spoke right like squash squash the demand in us is so high yes. like you uh, can yeah. masuk ivy league you nak masuk yes. Stanford, you nak masuk <laughs> all brown and all the big 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 universities in US, you boleh masuk aja kalau you 
pandai main squash yes. you know let, let me feel okay the gara Yes, let me, you are right, Charlene. Um, I'm very proud of my juniors, uh, our squash juniors, some in Yale, some in Harvard, yeah. Pennsylvania wow. University, Stanford. We have Princeton and many more uh, other universities because of squash. And of course, they have to be smart as well lah, in education. Yes, yes. So when you yes. combine both, this is when you have extra bonus thing. And I'm sure hmm. Jack being very, very smart as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now you are a Wushu coach. How does actually education help you to be a good coach? Uh, actually, uh, for me, it's like more to the communication skills. Yeah, because when you um, explore yourself more into all like different fields and industry, like, like what I've learned in the MBS, I need to communicate and have uh, more networking skill with all the classmates yeah so from there i learned a lot how they talk how they speak and how they explain everything so from that way i learned like um, how can i explain easier in an easier way to all my students or even to the parents because sometimes they they wouldn't know yeah how the students or they're gonna train right so you need to turn the language yeah to make them understand yeah. everything yeah so that's what i learned Perfect. We have our yeah. ex badminton player now. A yeah. coach. She has her Definitely. own academy, Daphne Ng. Yeah. She said, I believe mm -hmm. language foundation is important. Although you know you have a bright future in sports, when you have strong foundation in language, it helps yeah. in education. Yeah. So Perfect. I believe what Daphne said, language could be, you know, you speak few languages and also communication yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Because as an athlete, you know, in our one of our episode, cakap betul betul lah. Yeah. Communication is so important to show who you are and who you represent mm -hmm. as well, and as mm -hmm. well as communicating to listen and to give feedback to coaches and all untuk mm -hmm. menjadi seorang atlet yang lebih berjaya lah dan seterusnya mm -hmm. manusia yang betul. lebih berjaya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jack, betul. your last word please to everybody. Um, last word. Um. Yeah, please be active <laughs> in all the things. Uh. You need to uh, <laughs> pick yourself up to all of your friends or family. Yeah, because that's the only way they, they will know your thoughts and everything. And I'm sure that they, will, uh, they are very willing to help you. Yeah, and stay safe, stay healthy. And Selamat Hari Raya again. <laughs> and okay. thank you, Sharon thank and Sharon for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Wow, thank you very much, Jack. Uh, our dear friend, a very educated person, very respectful. Yes. And yes. as a Wushu coach now, I'm very sure he is one of our top coaches because like he said, education, communicating, and of course, rationally, you know, how to do programs, write report, yes. recorded um, athletes punya result and all together. That will make a very... I should say high performance coach lah, kan? Yeah. Um, yeah. Education makes. I think education teaches you to be better athletes, better coaches, better sports administrators. It, it teaches you how to think and how to approach and solve a problem better than than if you don't have it, kan? So that's it. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Hmm. And hmm. here we hmm. have um a lot of uh, sports school students as well, top athletes yeah. in Malaysia. Uh, sport school coaches, teachers who are listening to us. Terima kasih banyak-banyak. Yeah. Saya harap yeah. perkongsian you. ini anda boleh berkongsi kepada uh, para atlet mahupun uh, kepada semua anak-anak kecil yang ingin bersukan. Kerana paling Betul. penting tu sukan penting untuk I should say character building at the same time yeah. to make the family proud, the individual proud, the country proud and the preparation for life after sports has to be proper as well and one of them yes. education and preparation and this is when i would like to share with everybody the article that i wrote in uh, astro arena blog bila i tulis article ni when i wrote this article is like suddenly the idea and <laughs> everything comes in like writing a love song lyrics uh. although i'm not a singer <laughs> but uh. there was one day it just hit me hard because I heard from news, former athletes retire and at that time, Nicole David also announcing her retirement and all. So I thought, 
it's good for me to share tips. How do you prepare life after sports? So please uh, let me share with you. These are my tips for everybody. So you can see here, life after sports, help, my tajo is help, who am I after sport? Mm -hmm. Sebenarnya saya menulis artikel ni dalam bahasa Melayu, tapi ramai international viewers that says, Sharon, please write it in English as well. So yeah. I was very, very happy and grateful that there are permintaan lah uh, because they okay. acknowledge uh, how I share the article and so that they can share with everybody. So tips yang saya tulis di sini sudah pasti yang pertama, think of possible career after sports. Yes. And it's very important the career doesn't have to be in sports industry. It could be yes. um, business, cooking, um, tailoring, music. If you love music, it doesn't have to confine only in sports industry. But naturally, because you love sports, passionate in sports, naturally you go into sports business, you go into coaching and all this. Number two, planning is extremely important. Planning bukan saja dalam career, tapi planning financially, personal yeah. relationship, sama ada you nak kahwin, yeah. bertunang dan sebagainya. And because mm -hmm. that is part of life as well. Betul tak, Shalin? Betul, betul. And uh, we can see here, of, of course, new skills. Macam saya kata tadi, please, athletes out there, your life is not just sport. Yeah. Because I'm afraid if everything is all about sports without other new skill, when you stop sports, transitioning to a new career, you'll be lost. Because all yeah. you know is your sport. For example, kalau you tahu main badminton, badminton je you tahu. Benda-benda lain macam write apa tu, proposal, tak tahu, communication, resume. resume. Jadi semua ni para atlet kena prepare dan bersedia. Then number four, I wrote here, life goals also very important. Again, life is life. It's not just about sport, whether yeah. how do you move forward. And number five, social network. Okay. Social network ni sebagai atlet, kita berjumpa dengan kawan-kawan dari luar negara, daripada different industry, kita jumpa menteri, kita jumpa pegawai dan sebagainya. And it's extremely important. Let me tell you, sometimes you get job or you don't get jobs or you get projects or you don't get projects or you get business or not, it's all about social networking. Network, yeah, betul. That is the reality, kawan-kawan. And kepada para mm -hmm. athlete, make use of your network. Semasa you are an athlete, jumpa kawan. Make sure you communicate with them. Hantar selamat hari raya message. Say hi once in a while. Keep the community yeah. with you. Then number six, mm -hmm. to get support. For example, like me, I'm not perfect as well. Although I have my degree, I have... Actually, I prepared pretty well. But still, I was afraid before I went into a new job. Yeah. So this Anxiety. is when, correct. So this is when you know you need to learn how to write your CVs for interview, your management skill, your communication skill, and this is the best for athlete athlete sekolah sukan to start now. When you yeah. are 12, 13 years old, 14, 15, this is for you to start now. Saya harap ada syllabus untuk uh, leadership and also untuk skill-skill se sebegini untuk atlet-atlet uh, sekolah sukan. Nombor tujuh, well, disappointment is part of transition. Uh, <laughs> yes. Memang, uh, well, that's life. Eh? Yes. As you stop being an athlet, you were top of the world. Once you stop, maybe people do not know you anymore. Yes, you feel a bit sad, but that's life. And how do you move forward is very, very important. And since it's a new world, you all you know about sports is all about sports. But when you do a new transition into new job, new life, yes, I agree. You might feel very small and you might do mistakes as you do your new job. But don't give up. 
Keep learning, yeah. be humble, listen to your superior, listen to your colleague and do better and better. So from my experience, when I went into broadcasting, I tak ada experience pun. Tapi I listen, I work very hard being humble and make sure that I eco arahan and learn as much as I can. Then And this is when I am very grateful to the um, skill and character that sports has taught me. Commitment, yeah. work hard, responsible, discipline, discipline perseverance, and all that yeah. I use it for my life after sports. And number sure. eight, kawan-kawan semua, to all young athletes and also retiring athletes, be confident and be brave. It's a new life after sports. It's a new beginning and it's fun to explore. But again, yeah. preparation is very important. Get support system and you have to be true to yourself and be confident about it. Then your life Betul. after sports will be smooth. So what do you think, Charlie? Uh, yes, I agree with you. I also like uh, for me, memang I'm like you so. Kadang-kadang macam sebab my parents pun dah cakap banyak kali so macam I suka like okay, 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 I have to prepare. Although memang lah kita tengah shock, tengah dah menang semua, okay, you like in cloud nine but then you still have to uh, face reality pun because it's a life cycle. Ad, ada turun, ada 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 naik, ada turun. So, I started preparing myself also. Um, was after the like uh, I mentioned in our earlier uh, episodes uh, was after the Commonwealth Games, so I went to study and prepared myself, got my degree, and then uh, in sports psychology and coaching because that sports is my life. Like some of us here also, sports is my life. So what is the thing that differentiates me from other athletes? What's my strong strong point? Sports psychology. So that is what I dove into drove into i was really passionate about it and right now also macam sharon i also give motivation talk to kids to companies i give coaching sessions so with all the knowledge that we collect over the years even though maybe it's just one hour a day uh, or you know uh, three hours a week even though it's small but when you accum accumulate it over the years banyak juga sebenarnya so Mungkin jangan takut when we when we athlete. Mungkin seminggu tu mungkin kalau nak hari hari maybe too much for you if you're not if you dah jenis athlete yang dah lama stop belajar kan. Maybe it's like too shock too shocking for you. Start start kecil start small. Start one hour or thirty minutes two hours slowly build up sampai dia dah jadi habit. Then it becomes easier for you. Uh, but yeah, as like macam saya cakap tadi when you're an athlete, you can sacrifice your time and all things so that you can progress as an athlete. So, bila kita nak focus on our transition period for retirement, kita kena focus on other things juga so that we can become better uh, retirees in, in a way. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, okay. I actually shared in the Facebook about my article just now. So viewers, you can please free to share with everybody because it's yeah. meant to be shared to guide everybody. Kan? Good things we mm. share with everybody. Okay, sudah sampai masanya our good friend, former netball player, now orang yeah. besar dekat MSN dan juga ISN. ISN. Ini, beliau merupakan ketua cawangan kepakaran kejurulatihan ISN. Hmm. Please welcome Afzan Mahadi. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Salam Hai. sejahtera. Hai. Salam. Selamat raya. Zan, apa khabar? Baik, baik, baik. Menunggu dengan penuh keimanan. Keimanan. <laughs> <laughs> So, ah, penunggu dengan penuh keimanan ni. Eh. Ah. So, Abzan tu memang kawan lama. Dulu yes. uh, 1998 Commonwealth Games, kita yep. satu team with Charlene as well. Yep. So, Zan, yes. kita yes. tengok tak bagaimana community, friendship kita ni sampai sekarang yep. kita jalinkan yes. dengan erat sekali. Ya, yeah, because kita started uh, from new beginning. Uh, I, I started dengan uh, sukan bola jaring since 1992. Uh, when I was involved with the netball, uh, I terexpose dengan dunia, it's not about netball. 
I exposed with a squash, with a uh, bowlers, with a quite numbers of uh, team dalam 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 sukan di Malaysia. And I I nampak uh, the relationship tu dia dah jadi macam satu family. So I tak nampak uh, perbezaan uh, squash, bowling and so on dalam uh, konteks sukan di Malaysia because kita pergi as a one flag flag of Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. So Zan, um, cerita yeah. sikit perjalanan you sebagai seorang atlet and yeah. of course education dan yeah. sekarang uh, your career life after sports. Alright, um, I started 1992 dalam mewakili negara lah pada tu, masa tu I rasa I punya age uh, sama dengan Shalin. Um, <laughs> bila saya, I lalui the uh, process of uh, training, I train by uh, dengan seorang jurulatih luar negara, nama beliau adalah Coach Cathy Gillespie. During that time, I have zero knowledge in term of speaking in English because I'm Terengganurian. I do not know what to do and so on. And uh, dalam team, um, I antara atlet yang paling heavy. So biasanya dekat Jalan Raja Muda dulu, bila kita pergi training tiga kali seminggu ni, I actually adalah orang yang terakhir akan keluar daripada tempat training. Why? After weight training and so on, uh, my coach akan cakap Afzan, you need to continue with a cycling or whatever jogging about an hour. So lucky or not, the rest of them dah balik naik bus. I'm the only one yang akan stay dalam kereta bersama coach I. What I, am I to do? I tak tahu. I cannot speak English at all during that time. So I hentam sajalah. Sampai satu tahap, I'm able to speak in English. And uh, started from uh, that 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 time, uh, develop me to be a better person, uh, gain confident more bila bercakap dengan orang dua, baik atlet ataupun coaches ataupun scientist-scientist yang ada dekat ISM pada waktu tu. Dan uh, kalau nak ikutkan 1998, I dah mewakili negara. 1996, I dah pergi ke World Junior Netball Championship dekat Canada. During that time, I dah dilantik menjadi uh, menjadi captain. So bila jadi captain ni, kita kena bercakap dengan captain negara lain. So benda tu lagi gain confidence pada I. Uh, sebab I assume, bukan semua negara, bukan semua atlet di luar negara um, confident untuk cakap English. Tapi I hentam. I cakap I can do better than others. So yes. uh, from started from that, I dah wakil. Lepas tu I continue dengan wakil negara di 1998 di Commonwealth Games and I met all of you there. Uh, I dapat peluang keemasan pada tahun 1996. I actually adalah batch pertama yang masuk uh, program uh, UPM uh, special untuk atlet. During that time, I ingat I hanya belajar 3 jam ke 4 jam sehari. And I had three session early in the morning, 6.30 in the morning until 8. Uh, kita akan pergi session jogging. Start pukul 9.30, I dah ada dalam kelas, until 3 o'clock. 4 o'clock, I start balik training sampai pukul 7.30 ke pukul 8. Itulah my life during that time. Selama 2 tahun. Wow. And the best part, uh, 1998, uh, during Commonwealth Game punya beginning, I still remember on the 2nd of September, I dapat uh, interview untuk masuk uh, sebagai uh, masa tu I tak tahu lagi I dapat ke tak tau. I pergi ke University of East London punya interview and Alhamdulillah I dengan confidentnya bila I ingat Bernard Ryder tanya I uh, are you able to look after yourself in terms of cost of living because we just give you like um, only fee for the uh, I mean study book and so on. Of course I cakap sebab I datang daripada family yang berada I confident cakap macam tu, padahal <laughs> hakikatnya I anak guru besar biasa. My mom masa during my late mom masa tu adalah tukar masak and so on. Tapi I terlalu confident sebab I nak that scholarship. I nak ubah diri I to be a better person so that orang akan nampak atlet, atlet ya, uh, seorang yang bagus daripada orang lain. Uh, so the best part bila I pergi lambat satu bulan ke London, I sampai kat sana, I was uh, jet lag sikit. Ada sikit homesick. Pukul 3 pagi, I bangun. Apa aku nak buat ni? Esok nak ada kelas ni. And I can't really understand what they're talking about. For example, the you know lah, the uh, Londoner punya slang. Uh, today, uh, we're going to do uh, like a flat air balik air. What is that? I can't understand that. So, I so confident. I, 
So during that time, I feel like, oh, matilah I. I kena balik Malaysia dah ni. But by the end of the day, I look forward untuk improve myself to be a better uh, students. And yeah. uh, di, di London sendiri, I look after myself in term of uh, scholarship tu. Uh, fee saja yang my University Office London bagi. And uh, I feel so glad because I actually the first uh, Malaysian athletes yang dapat scholarship tu dekat wow, University of London. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Zan, so uh, yeah. um, your journey is fantastic. It should be a yeah. role model. You, you are a role yeah. model to everybody, kan? Thank It's thank all you. about. Yes, I yes. like your being frank that you kata you tak tahu cakap English but you learn. Yeah, Betul. Yeah, you yeah, jangan yeah. malu kena muka tebal because you mm. want to move forward. And this yeah, is a yeah. good example for athletes. For example, yes. kalau anda, anda yes. dihantar keluar daripada Malaysia, don't so feel you. afraid. Yes, yeah. you know, we are again, we are not perfect. Sometimes we, in terms of bahasa, in English, mm. mungkin uh, yeah. steng-steng je. But yeah. like what Abzan said, hentap, mm. belajar, hentap. make sure you learn melalui yeah. kamus ke, now handphone senang translation. Yeah. Huh? Yes, yes. Macam-macam yeah. yeah. app ada. Yes, yeah. and number two, pasal makanan tu, janganlah balik-balik teringat nasi lemak bila kat over yeah, school. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Hello. betul. I betul. <laughs> sandwich for lunch almost every day because I was in Amsterdam and also in Antwerp for 10 years. Do hmm. I want nasi lemak? Of course. But I can't because <laughs> I must train well, adapt yeah. to the culture, adapt to the environment. If yes. your goal is huge and you really mean it for yourself, for your yeah. family, for your coaches and for Malaysia, I'm very yeah. sure you put your mind. What do you think, yeah. Zan? Yes, uh, because masa yeah. mula-mula I berada di London, uh, I jadi jumpa seorang kakak senior ni. Dia pakai baju kurung. Masa tu I was, uh, I dah berada dalam about two weeks. I, I nampak dia. I tanya dia, are you Malaysian? I tanya dia, are you Malaysian? Lepas tu dia jawab bahasa dalam bahasa Sabah, kau bodoh ke? Mau tengok aku pakai baju kurung macam ni, aku bukan orang Malaysia. Aku orang Malaysia, dia cakap dengan dia. So started from that, I cakap okay. Sebab apa? I back pada Charlene punya statement tadi. Kita tidak boleh meletakkan kita ni because kita atlet nasional. So or, semua orang nak kena kenal, semua orang nak kena rasa feel Oh, so you grateful sangat. Bila you berada di luar negara, you are equal to everybody. So you can treat yourself like normal normal people, like, like 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 them. So I started, I just, I suka dah start tegur orang. Padahal masa I kat Malaysia dulu, I jarang-jarang tegur orang. Kurang mesra dengan orang. Tapi bila di luar negara, you have no choice. You terpaksa yep. buat. It's And survive. finally, di, di, di London, I, ber, I, I duduk hall mula-mula. Kos yang dekat hall tu mahal lah, around 200. 55 pounds per month dan dia kutip duit tu dalam 60 pounds per week so I tak ada duit untuk bayar so finally I met one Malay man, nama dia Pak Nick N-I-K tapi dia tukar N-I-C-K uh, dia oh adalah yeah. Malaysian uh, cool. ya, yeah. oh yeah, dia British lah sekarang then uh, dia look for, dia membantu I untuk sewa rumah dia dan I encourage numbers of my friends yang belajar dekat University of London and so on to be part of my um, apa gang yang duduk satu rumah tu. Yeah. Uh, so starting from that but uh, pada masa yang sama bila I berada di sana satu keistimewaannya I dapat be uh, belajar di mana I attach dengan satu club. Club uh, netball dekat sana because netball uh, adalah sukan nombor dua. Uh, sukan wanita nombor dua yeah. di, di di UK. Yeah. So I played netball uh, during that time if I'm not mistaken Masa I started masuk join training dia orang minus 5. Can you sejuk imagine ya? minus 5? Yes, masa sejuk. Uh, then they ask me to wear skirt like normal I buat dekat Malaysia. I cakap I'm so sorry I can't do that. Otherwise I tak nak I tak boleh join this program anymore. Sebab terlalu sejuk. But I enjoy because dalam masa 3 tahun I berada dekat sana, I join beberapa club dan I join dia punya league dan I berjaya naikkan uh, ranking universiti I dalam All England Southern Association uh, dan I pernah menjadi uh, back balik pada statement you all tadi leader. Leader I pernah menjadi president Malaysian Student Union over there. Wow, fantastic yeah. Zan. Yeah. So yeah. like it, macam Charlene I'm sure we agree right since mm -hmm. the yeah. beginning of our talk life after sports yeah. sports ni not just about the sports itself tapi dia cultivate leadership yeah. and yeah. also courage yeah and bravery in a 
individual like for you Azlan mm-hmm. macam kata tadi memanglah confirm tak tahu cakap English dah sampai berabuk English engkau nombor <laughs> dua as a leader then yep. cerita sikit uh, your transition now sebagai ketua cawangan kepakaran kejulatian ISN the okay, transition I sebenarnya to, uh, I, I sebenarnya I plan diri I I nak jadi apa pada umur I sekian sekian, sekian. I started, uh, I plan macam mana. Mula-mula dulu, I punya idea nak jadi pensyarah. Tapi by the end, I masuk, I rasa eh, tinggi sangatlah level tu. Tapi bagus untuk you plan benda yang very tinggi, you tak capai at least duduk kat tengah-tengah. Daripada you plan bawah, paling bawah, tak capai lagi bawah. So itu, itu tak, tak bagus. So, um, I I buat uh, leadership skill ni, uh, dia started dalam 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 sukan I sendiri. Biasanya dalam sukan I, I'm a, I playing a position goalkeeper. I always shout dekat a friend of me to say that you should move right, left, right, left because dalam team netball, uh, keeper ni antara orang yang akan stand banyak lebih kepada move, movement yang yang sikit compare dengan others. So apa guna I ada mulut kalau I tak mau bercakap, apa guna I ada otak sekiranya otak dengan mulut I tak nak communicate dan tak nak connect each other. So yeah. dalam uh, dalam uh, I started career I tahun 2002 I still remember 4 hari bulan 2, 2002. Dan masa tu Datuk Zul, Datuk Sri Zulkir Pilih Sembong yang interview I, dia cakap, you nak bekerja di MSN sampai bila? Itu soalan pertama beliau lah dan Tuan Haji Azizan waktu tu. I nak bekerja se- sehingga I lepas pencen. What you mean by that? Maknanya I takkan berhenti. Baik di MSN ataupun di ISN. Then uh, Datuk Doktor yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Ramla transfer me from Uh, Majlis Sukan Negara ke Institut Sukan Negara And my journey started uh, growth very well Di mana I'm leading quite numbers of uh, cawangan ataupun unit during that time Then my interest dalam sukan ni Beside sukan yang I jaga Adalah untuk develop young kids Because apa yang berlaku Kebanyakan parents always, always force their, their, their children to be a uh, a winner to be sebenarnya children ni all about fun you know kalau masa i belajar dulu i pernah pergi dekat satu yeah. sekolah ni children can play whatever sports that they want to play uh, then you kena tengok dari segi sebab kita belajar lebih sikit kan uh, i sambung i punya hmm. masters dekat U, USM di bawah Dr Olex waktu tu i selalu fight sebab i suka foreigner yang suka bergaduh dengan i i rasa both of you pun sama because you <laughs> ada pengalaman jangan foreigner tu. Berbaik-baiklah. Hmm? Oh, tak, bergaduh in term of uh, bergaduh in term of you dapat ilmu yang 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 dia nak Knowledge. yang dia uh, boleh share. Uh, so something yang betul good. Lah, betul lah, uh, Yes. So betul. I banyak uh, dia banyak taught me about the sensitive period kepada fizik physical uh, attributes bagi setiap uh, atlet kanak-kanak. So maknanya kita sebagai seorang coach muda jangan yell dekat kanak-kanak contohnya sebab jangan bagi dia body shaming ke whatever it is. Kau gemuk, kau tak boleh main sukan. No, that's not the way. So, um, hmm. macam I sendiri, I tak pernah kurus pun daripada I started netball. Tapi sekarang I said dah kurus sikit lah kot. Ha, sebab kita ada kesedaran. Dah dah cantik dah. Itu benda. So, itu benda-benda yang 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 develop diri kita untuk jadi lagi, lagi bagus. So, um, leadership skill yang ada dekat uh, I adalah started dengan sukan yang I ceburi. Hmm, hmm. Mungkin kalau yeah. I individu sport, I mungkin tak boleh jadi macam I I tidak boleh secekal both of you Because yeah. you even <laughs> dengan, uh, dengan individu sport kan yeah. Mungkin yeah. I akan jadi lebih arrogant, I do not know I, I tak tahu benda tu, tapi I but, develop but then, melalui pelajaran yeah. yes. I think arrogant can be a positive way Arrogant yes, means yes. you are confident yes. about yourself Tapi yeah. not being stuck up You, yes. you still yeah. listen, Don't put anyone down Just yeah, confident yeah. of your own ability yeah. sahaja. Yeah. Cuma, leader, and, uh, hmm. cuma leadership ni satu benda yang perlu everybody should know. Kita perlu mendengar apa pendapat orang lain. Dan by the end of the day, the call is, call, apa uh, collective decision tu sebenarnya bring uh, satu team kita ni macam you know lah, the pyramid yeah. system tu there lah. Yeah. So yeah. Zan, uh, your yeah. kata-kata akhir, kata, katakan anda ingin nasihat your advice to young yeah. athlete out, out there in sports. Um, athlete perlu sabar. That's number one. Athlete perlu sabar, you perlu lalui. There is no fast track uh, achievement. Yeah. 
Kalau you tengok kita punya I tengok Sharon Wee ni kita tengok Shailene Zulkifli and so on Berapa lama dia orang berada dalam sukan tu Macam mana kesabaran dengan injury and so on Atlet perlu sabar That's number one Atlet perlu ikhlas dengan jurulatih Dan tidak menderhaka Itu satu benda yang paling important dengan jurulatih ataupun dengan cikgu kita tidak boleh mendahaka Walau macam mana kita tak happy sekalipun uh, Back to the normal uh, point lah I cakap tidak boleh mendahaka mm. Kalau yeah. you think that you want to mendahaka Back balik They are your teachers They are your coach uh, Okay Zan So yeah. Zan yeah. thank you so much for your time yeah, And sure. all thank the you. very best And continue yeah. your good work yeah. Yeah. Thank you Thank you Thank you How are you? Dan that, itulah Afzan, our uh, former netball athletes, now a leader as well, has gone through a yeah. lot of challenges in education dan sebagainya. Tapi yang paling penting kita dengar sana sikap berani beliau eh, to learn. So this is yeah. when our dearest athletes have to take uh, that spirit lah. Challenge, yeah. Belajar, yes. And uh, thank you very much kepada viewers yang masih bersama kami uh, Terus bersama kami sebab hari ini episod ke-6 ni adalah episod terakhir Jadi lepas ni uh, kena tunggulah uh, Tunggu dekat mana? Kemungkinan TV talk show ke? <laughs> Jadi <laughs> terus bersama kami, saya dan juga Charlene We want to read uh, many many more comments here And one yeah. very interesting comment uh, dari Daina Abdullah Uh, Daina Abdullah, pegawai uh, yeah, uh, KPM ya, yeah, Kementerian Pendidikan yeah. Malaysia dari Sports Department. Uh, dia dan rakan-rakan cikgu-cikgu sekolah sukan semua pegawai tengah menyaksikan uh, show yeah. kita. Thank you very much dan juga um, students, atlet-atlet sekolah sukan. Thank you very much as well. Daina Abdullah kata, Sharon and Charlene, you've been talking mostly about elite athletes like yourself. But what advice would you give student athletes who are not elite enough to go much further in sports and education as they are just average? What can they do after school? Wow, very interesting. Yeah. Jadi, Daina ingin um, bertanya lah kalau atlet tu dia just in the middle uh, secara sederhana dari segi prestasi dalam sukan dan juga education. Apa seterusnya untuk mereka? Charlene, please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I baru nak cakap. Um, actually, I wanted to point out that that uh, comment also from Diana because uh, this I had the experience, the real life experience, like from the one of the kids that I coach in Sukma. Uh, she's not actually a standout lah. She's not actually a standout. They macam macam tadi Diana cakap tengah tengah. Uh, because she has some limitations, but then because of her belief and her work ethic. She was still able to win uh, in the Sukma, uh, Pahang Sukma. I think she won two goals in Pahang Sukma, which was memang semua orang terkejut lah. But because of the work and education and the belief she had in herself and her team. So, um, after that, after Sukma tu, dia macam, dia stop and she let talk to me. We had a few conversations. And, so, but what do I do now? I, I'm not good enough to be in the Pelapis, the National Juniors, but I still love bowling. So, uh, since uh, she had the achievement in Sukma, she was able to apply for scholarship. Uh, she was able get to get into UITM, uh, IPTA, and she was able to uh, get a sport scholarship. And then she used that as a starting point for her to pursue other stuff, uh, to get a degree in, I think, uh, business or mass uh, So, actually... I, that's why I like when I tell kids also when I when I coach them. I say, everyone has a different uh, level, yang the maximized uh, maximum level that you can achieve as a as an athlete or as your own personal punya apa um, personal punya pinnacle, which is not wrong. Some maybe in that five percent, Nicole David, Latuk uh, Lee Chong Wei. Some maybe national level, slightly lower. Some maybe Sukma level. And it's fine to be, to know which level you are. Kalau Sukma level, then go all out with the Sukma. So, then masa lepas habis Sukma, then you boleh dapat all those, uh, the benefits or all those things that you can get, like uh, scholarship from IPTA, IPTS. Everybody has a thing that they are good at. And I think if you just work hard enough, 
you're able to use sports as a platform and a stepping stone for to get to your dream. Um, obviously, it won't happen just overnight. You have to work hard at it. Even kalau you rasa macam it's impossible, just stick to it. Macam Afzal cakap tadi, sabar and just do the hard work and the results will come. Yep. Uh, for me, I want to add in a bit. Sports actually doesn't mean you have to be elite athletes. Sports yeah. has more than that. Not just being uh, getting you to become a world champion, but sports create your good character. Extra bonus, if you are smart or average, doesn't matter. Sports actually makes you healthy, take care of yourself, gain your confidence. There are many more. Jadi kalau yeah. kepada para atlet yang orang kata steng-steng lah dalam performance in sport dan juga education tu, please believe in yourself and work hard. Sebab yeah. bukan semua yang boleh dapat 10A, 20A, Betul. 15A, Betul. 9A. No, I mean, yeah. Karen, macam hmm. macam kita cakap before that pun kan, macam you don't, maybe you bukan, maybe you're not a coach. Maybe you can do become a sport scientist, hmm. belakang tabi, mesua. If you're good technical wise with your hands, you can be a mesua. You can be a physiotherapist. There's a lot of things that you can do that also support. Yep, uh, sports sport industry one, yeah. one aja. Sports industry hmm. is huge. Uh, seperti yang dikatakan oleh KBS yang uh, kini memang ingin membantu sports industry untuk berkembang, ya. Di mana kejaya dalam sports industry termasuklah coach. Macam Charlene kata, physio. Uh, jadi pembekal pakaian, pakaian sukan. Jadi hmm. pembekal racket. Uh, antaranya jadi sports doctor. Antaranya jadi uh, empire. Macam Diana Abdullah, international ta table tennis empire. Dan banyak lagi. Jadi tak semestinya para atlet perlu um, terus berkencimpung menjadi um, full time athletes tapi kalau boleh that is every athlete's dream lah tapi jika tidak kesampaian don't give up don't feel sad and the main thing is you use sports as something that develop your good character that you can use yes. in life not just in sports but in life dalam kejaya apa-apa kejaya pun dan menjadi orang Betul. ataupun manusia yang baik lah melalui karakter yang uh, kita dapat Positive. daripada sukan. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, di sini saya nak baca satu lagi komen, Zaim Zak S. Dia kata, I think ex-athletes need to also face the reality that after sports, things will not be served on a silver platter anymore. The faster one realize, realize it, this, the quicker one can move on to the next phase of life. Totally, ya, uh, Zaim. Um, like what I said, yes. dalam artikel yang saya tulis tu, disappointment is part of retirement. Because yes. again, can you imagine? Katakan you used to be world number one. When you stop, people might not know you as world number one anymore. People will know you as a X person, a B person, yes. an A person. Yeah. And that is very important because if we doubt you as sports identity or world number one or an athlete, who are you in life? And this is when macam yeah. Charlene, uh, Jack, Abzan dan saya bincangkan tadi, very important to have your education, to have positive attitude, to have other skill, to build uh, who you are out of sports one day. Yeah, so, because yeah. can macam Sharon, like for me, because some people, some athletes have to also realize that even though you're a good athlete, you're a great athlete, you're a champion athlete, doesn't necessarily will mean that you become a good coach, you know? So, like Sharon said, like there's a lot of uh, things, there's a lot of careers out there that, that you can that you can go into uh, macam broadcasting, journal journalism and all those things. So, you have to find what your passion is after sport and go for that. Macam you go for your sports, your passion for your sports, find a second passion for something else that's within your sport or outside your sport. Because yep. I think everyone has different passions 
and that's not wrong because that's what drives you because at the end of the day when we go outside and work it's going to be the same we're going to sacrifice the same same almost the same amount or same uh qualities that you have in sport you're going to do it in real life as well so that's make sure you really find your passion uh so that it becomes uh second nature to you and you you tak rasa penat bila you have to give the extra work to succeed to become a leader yeah um life after sports our former athletes who are now doing very well some have retired in um corporate life and all antaranya datuk marina chin former kpm yes. director of sports prof shamala Uh, in UPM, a professor in UPM, also leaders in many associations, termasuk hockey associations, even ISN CEO Encik Faizal, a very, very good footballer himself, and through sports and through knowledge, he's uh, managing, lead, leading ISN as well. Even legends like Dola Saleh, a football coach, our friend Telinio, she's an expert in accreditation and sports entries have gone so many of Olympic yes. Games and Youth Olympics and all this. Yes. We have Daphne Ng, Nora Sila Khalid, Rashid Sidik, now a coach, used to be former top athletes. And Shaharuddin Jamaluddin, our karate champion, Saha Chem. He's uh, an actor, yeah. no Actor, yeah. Yes, he's a, yes. a, a stun actor, very, very good. Yeah. And um, recently as well, I want to acknowledge our former gymnast, Dr. Farah Hani Imran. Yes, uh, professor. He's a medical yes. associate professor, Professor Matya from UKM. He's a, a plastic surgeon and an expert as well. So these are examples of former athletes who are doing very well transitioning yes. their life. But I'm very sure they work very hard to prepare well. Yes, yes. Yeah. But sometimes I think you have to prove yourself uh, more compared to other people to show that just because I'm an athlete doesn't mean that I can't do as well as other people can. And yeah. Sharon, you should think that Sharon we, uh, <laughs> Fatiha, and uh, yang saya tak siapa tak kau tu siapa? Azamudin. Ah, Azam Ubin, itu semua sports commentator uh, on Astro Arena. Alright, alright. So, TV, TV kita pun nak tahu, we have about 10-15 minutes more to viewers, mm -hmm. uh, kepada viewers semua, pendapat anda apa yang boleh dilakukan oleh sports organisation, katakan KBS, MSN, ISN, KPM, mm -hmm. corporate company untuk membantu atlet um, going through life after sports, kemungkinan dari segi pekerjaan. What, what do you think? So I think for yeah. me, this is my personal uh, opinion. I believe that athletes life after sports, KPM, KPT, banyak-banyak membantu dari segi education, scholarship and all this opportunity untuk have uh, latihan, go overseas for competition at the same time, flexible uh, study as well. That is and true. how about job, life after sports? I, I feel that Kementerian Belia dan Sukan has to take this very seriously to help the athletes themselves. And I agree, athletes has to have qualification and they have to prove that they qualified to have the job. That's for sure. Bukan sebarangan yeah. lah. Yeah, Tapi yeah. KBS, MSN, ISN perlu membuka lebih banyak peluang pekerjaan ataupun peluang-peluang perniagaan kepada former athletes. Kalau kita tak tolong sports community themselves, who yeah. will help sports community? Because yeah, very true. kita jaga kita, I think that's very important. And even other industry, they are taking care of their industries, player as well. So in sports, we have to help each other as well. I think that's our opinion. Yes. Yeah. And I think Sharon, we also have other uh avenues yang athletes muda-muda adik-adik semua tu kan yang that they can go to besides KBS, MSN, ISN to prepare themselves. I think macam those in the podium program we, we have uh before we have career and lifestyle macam dia ajar you how to make uh CV, how to uh sell yourself to sponsors, to future employers and so on and then now we have MACE in MSN 
and also we have other um, avenues like OCM, they have the Athletes Commission, all these uh, extra avenues, memang dia ada wujud sebab untuk uh, memberi sokongan kepada atlet. So kita sebagai atlet, kita kena gunakan kemudahan yang ada to help ourselves. Because at the end of the day, walaupun orang nak tolong kita, tapi kita kena tolong diri kita sendiri juga. You know, at the end of the day, we are the ones that have to take the first step, that have to take, um, make the first move to improve ourselves. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, athletes themselves, athlete itu sendiri yang perlu menentukan masa hadapan mereka sebab kalau anda tidak membantu diri sendiri, siapa yang akan bantu? Memang banyak peluang di luar sana, even dalam sukan, Uh, Kerajaan Malaysia melalui KBS, MSN, ISN telah banyak membantu untuk menghantar atlet ke luar negara dan sebagainya Fasilitis terbaik hmm. di dunia, di Bukit Jalil yeah. dan sebagainya Stadium yang gah-gah untuk kita So atlet themselves have to work very hard Dan tentukan masa depan anda terutama uh, kehidupan selepas sukan Bukan saja dari segi kerja tapi kehidupan anda sendiri dari segi relationship dari segi finance management. Kita memang banyak dengar kan pemain-pemain bola sepak di luar sana sampai bankrupt dan sebagainya sebab tak tahu macam mana nak manage price money ataupun finance mereka sendiri. Jadi benda-benda ni I think it's very important to get support system lah. Uh, good friends, managers, even para pegawai dan sebagainya. Dan satu lagi ingin saya juga katakan um, opportunities for life after sports for Malaysian athletes I think it's very huge in Malaysia. They shouldn't be afraid, especially mom and dad shouldn't be afraid to let your children to be full-time athletes because these things has changed. We have great management of support system for our elite athletes. We have great education as well, scholarship. So. Let them enjoy their passion in sports. I think that's what I wanted to say. Yes, yes. I agree. I agree with you, Sharon. Because sports don't only um, build character, but they reveal who you are. And sports really push you to the limit because you have to form under pressure. And that's what makes uh, all athletes different than non-athletes. Because you can perform under pressure. Bila kita kerja kat luar sana pun, you will be expected to perform under pressure. So you, it's normal to you. Maybe other people, they feel like really stressed out. Just kerja je. But for you, because you dah, you dah handle pressure yang lebih, lebih besar daripada tu. Like you kena menang, you kena uh, apa, smash to win for one gold medal for the country. 35 juta orang dengan kena buat presentation to, to for example, secure a project. Mana lagi, mana lagi besar. So, you dah biasa dengan that type of pressure. When you're so used to that type of pressure, uh, any pressure pun will become, insyaAllah, easy for you to handle because you're so used to to performing under pressure. Yep. So, we are going to read um, our apa tu, viewers punya comments. Thank you very much. Semua yang hari ni memang cun lah. Memang banyak comment daripada anda. Terima kasih. Uh-huh. Ada yang kita baca, ada yang kita tak terbaca. Tapi, thank you very Betul. much. Um, kita akan terus membaca bila lepas live dekat Facebook komen lah sebab komen anda memang uh, bagus untuk kita discuss Betul. and belajar antara satu sama lain. Jadi antaranya we have here from Linio T. The, the essential thing is not to have conquered but to have fought well. Yeah. Very true. Very yeah. Olympism lah eh, Linio T. Yeah. Dia <laughs> memang Olympism. Yeah. Uh, semangat, semangat Olympism. Please, Charlene. Oh, and uh, from Rick Wee, um, our fellow sports uh, lawyer, it's crucial that athletes prepare for prepare life after sports at the very beginning of their career. True, there are many options for athletes and they should look not just within sports but outside sports for post-retirement career. So true. Uh, as you can see, um, uh, one of his colleagues uh, who who is also a national athlete and Leslie also Lee. a sports lawyer. Ah, Correct. Leslie, yeah, Leslie, uh, Dragon Boat. So you see, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Just, just uh, look hard enough 
to see what your other passion is and work hard for it like how we work hard for sports and i think we should be okay inshallah yeah. okay we have here wow nama glamorous c l a o l a l a pada satu <laughs> program yang diwujudkan oleh oleh you PSI yang dibuka kepada bekas atlet dalam bidang sains kejurulatihan sangat bagus. Upsi lah eh. Yes, uh, upsi. Kerana memberi peluang kejaya kepada ex-atlet untuk menjadi coach dan um, CG terlatih. Contoh terdekat suami saya dari yang merupakan bekas pesilat Malaysia yang kini menjadi coach silat sekolah sukan. Jadi tahniah. Mampu menjadi coach yang mendalami sukan dalam landasan sains sukan. Sport science. Yes. Yes. I think it's very good. I mean, macam tu cakap dia lah kan, Sharon, ada different levels. We we always need different people to provide support at different levels. If you cannot go to the national level, mungkin MSN, go to MSN negeri. If you cannot go to MSN negeri, go to sekolah sukan. There's always, always opportunities out there for you, but you just have to look hard enough, I think. Yeah, for sure. So, end yeah. of the day, yeah. to be an athlete is an honor. Yes. for the community and Definitely. for Malaysia and me and Charlene and many many more sports fans, sports enthusiasts, we encourage everybody to do sports because number one, because it's for health, you get very fit, yes. you get very confident, you build strong yes. characters and if you go further, obviously you become champions and world champions one day and this is what Uh, Charlene also can share with us because Charlene also five times uh, world bowling champion, Charlene. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's not easy but it's all worth it. But you have to work hard for it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, thank you very much again. Jadi kita nak simpulkan episod ke-6, episod terakhir nak sembang apa tu bersama Sharon Wee dan Charlene Zukifli, two Malaysian elite athletes co-host the show. Uh, tu yang yes. ada tick X factor tu kan. <laughs> lain daripada yang lain. Yeah, uh, di yeah. sini saya nak simpulkan apakah episod yang kita sudah um, uh, jalankan selama ini selama enam minggu antaranya episod pertama kita lihat di sini Charlie. So back eh. Yeah. Episod pertama nak sembang apa tu uh, di mana kita bincangkan tentang continuous learning uh, also related a bit to our last topic ni life after sport. And then we go to our second topic that we read for our second episode, Sharon. Yep. Yeah. Uh, our story, episode two, My Sporty Childhood, where we shared our stories uh, during our childhood days, zaman sekolah, zaman sekolah mendengar, rendah, university and so on, and how we went through all the ups and downs, challenges, uh, obstacles to get where we are today. Then episode 3, uh, cantik posternya. Thanks Alia and Charlene. <laughs> sebab ups and downs of fame sebab kita sebagai atlet terutama uh, atlet elit uh, memang jadi idola kepada community, adik-adik dan juga uh, anak-anak muda. So this is when um, perkara-perkara positif ingin atlet sampaikan kepada semua tapi pada masa yang sama perlu mengawal um, celebrity status tu supaya tidak yeah. menjadi impak negatif kepada performance atlet. Dan uh, episod keempat cakap betul-betul lah saya sendiri sebagai bekas atlet dan kini sebagai pengacara sukan, uh, jurnalis, saya sen- melihat sendiri bagaimana atlet-atlet ada yang boleh bercakap dengan baik, ada yang tidak dapat handle communication yeah. especially media communication sesuatu yang perlu diperbaiki oleh para atlet negara kerana bercakap dengan profesional terutama sekali bila keluar negara akan mewakili diri anda sendiri sukan yes. itu dan juga negara betul and for our fifth uh, fifth episode uh, we spoke about how to handle injury because uh, as we know all athletes whether national athletes uh, apa uh, athlete weekend athletes ke apa everybody will go through injury sama ada saya saya cakap tadi injury disebabkan oleh sukan atau tak pun injury juga so how do you handle injury macam mana kita uh, 
apa uh, handle our mental approach, physical approach, emotional approach, how we handle all of that uh, to combine so that we are still able to come back after uh, each injury. Yeah. And today, today's session, which is the last one. Jeng, jeng, jeng. Live after sport. <laughs> yes, live after sport. Um, uh, Sharon, go ahead. Live after sports, kehidupan selepas sukan sama ada dalam career dalam sukan ataupun kehidupan itu sendiri. Episod ke-6, ini merupakan sesuatu yang perlu uh, difokus oleh para atlet elit mahupun para atlet pelapis yang kini sedang bekerja keras untuk masuk uh, ke career sebagai atlet sepenuh masa. Education, very important. Skill. Uh, lain-lain skill selain daripada sukan, antaranya skill komputer ataupun skill um, macam-macam, hobi yang lain perlu uh, perlu uh, uh, anda ada. Uh, antaranya networking, uh, antaranya lagi adalah keberanian untuk mencuba sesuatu yang baru juga uh, perlu diperhatikan kepada semua. Uh, saya secara peribadi mengalami turun naik sebagai seorang atlet dan kehidupan selepas sukan. Jadi saya harap atlet-atlet semua dan juga support sistem akan membantu para atlet itu untuk merealisasikan kehidupan mereka yang lebih lancar dalam life after sports. Jadi itulah enam episod kita dalam nak sembang yeah. apa tu. Uh, kata-kata akhir, Charlene Zulkifli, our bowling queen, please. <laughs> Kata-kata akhir, uh, just saya nak ucapkan terima kasih kepada Sharon because um, for uh, inviting me to be a part of this sebab kita pun memang dah plan lama even before this kita ada bincang-bincang juga nak buat something like this and then uh, terjadinya uh, MCO dan peluang, opportunity untuk kami uh, berjinak-jinak dengan uh, hosting uh, our own show macam ni Uh, thanks Sharon for inviting me and for being a part of it. Saya pun banyak belajar dari Sharon because as you know Sharon pun dah ada career in uh, apa uh, sports as a sports journalist and uh, broadcaster sebagainya. Saya pula uh, so ingin ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua uh, our fans, uh, those yang watch our show from the first show sampai hari ini and maybe ada lepas ni yang yang baru mungkin tahu tentang our show after this uh, you can go to your our uh, YouTube channel Sharon dah create one YouTube channel for us so if you know anybody who needs any advice uh, that you think might be related to our six topics please ask them to go and see our YouTube channel because all our uh, sharing is based on our own experiences as well uh, our own triumphs, our own Uh, falls, our own defeat and I think all of that uh, helps to make you a better athlete, a better person uh, and have a better character um, lagi ya, selamat hari raya kepada semua uh, thank you so much this, this has been a really nice uh, and rewarding experience for me I enjoy it a lot, I hope all of you enjoyed it as much as me and Sharon uh, did uh, and I hope Uh, InsyaAllah kalau ada rezeki, we will be able to see you again soon, probably in another platform. Sharon? Thank you so much Sharlin. Uh, saya ucapan ribuan terima kasih kepada Sharlin Zulkifli, my friend in sports, also in life. Uh, our friendship grow not just in um, padang bola ataupun in stadium but more than that. I'm yes. very glad that we have moved on and we'll continue yes. to be forever friends and support each other. So macam Shalin kata tadi, platform ini untuk sharing kepada semua nak sembang apa tu untuk berkongsi pengalaman kita, our experience, our journey as elite athletes so that it can guide uh, younger athletes, coaches and to all sports community from our experience. As well as I think we are very passionate to empower and encourage everybody in yes. Malaysia or in the world to do sports because it's for health, it's for confidence, physically, mentally, emotionally, especially for women in sports, it's very important to do sports. And as well as, as we know, Malaysia, uh, very important to have sports as platform of unity. 
because masyarakat majmuk Malaysia dengan adanya sukan kita bersama-sama kita melupakan segala sempadan segala perbezaan antara satu sama lain and that is very important bagi saya dan Charlene we aspire as well after this episode 6 I think we have done very well. Thank you to the viewers. Uh, kalau Thank you, you suka kepada our sharing ni, thumbs up please. Because we aspire <laughs> to have our own TV sports talk show one day. And we hope that Insyaallah. stations out there, sponsors out there, KBS, MSN, ISN, please <laughs> come and support us. Because <laughs> I think we believe in that TV uh, sports talk show. Um, hosted by me and Charlene because it's a platform for health, for sports, for, for sports industry, a platform for sports, uh, I should say, sports community to say out what they want and as well as to promote their sports business and all this. And we want to use that sports show as our platform to help others as well. And again, yes, to athletes out there who are going through life after sports, Well, sports create our life storybook. That's, I think, very important. It's our storybook, actually. Go through it, enjoy it, explore more, yeah. because life after sports will be very fun. And if you take it very seriously and positively, it will change your life, actually, for a better. And end of the day, to all the young athletes, let's work together be a leader and be a proud Malaysian and I should say to all uh, Malaysian as well, keep believing in sports. So sampai di sini saja saya dan uh, Charlene Zulkifli, kita akan berjumpa anda lagi pada masa akan datang dan terima kasih. Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Raya. Terima kasih.